Tonight on Lost and Found. Since the age of 13, I've been the only Jones in my family. He's taken the name of the dad he's never met. The name has never really meant anything. Finding his father would change his life. I feel like a dog that's been chasing a car for 20 years. I'm not sure what's going to happen. And the elusive Irishman. He swam ashore, fell in love with a young Māori woman from here, and I'm the product, I guess, of that, of that union. Support, Black! A man of two worlds. Oh, yeah! Can they be reunited? I'm hoping I'm going to be the one to make those connections. Now, sooner rather than later. And? I got a lot of hits for the famous singer James Brown. When knowing a missing father's name is confusing. Great music, but not very helpful for my search. Will she find her dad? Come back down here! Families that are lost and found. My stomach's in knots at the moment, mate. You think they're always unpredictable. Whoa. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Jones. I'm looking for my biological father, Robert Jones, who my mother met and married in the early 80s in Australia. I've been looking for him for a long time, and I'd just like to get to know him and, and meet him and extend an invitation for him to be part of my life. The urge to find a family member can be very strong, and you never know what will show up along the way. Come on, boy. 31-year-old Dave Jones works in the justice system in Dunedin. He and his wife, Sarah, have baby twins, Archie and Arlo. Multitasking. <laughs> Dave had a happy childhood. He grew up in Southland with his mother and older brother, Tim, who has a different father. Although Dave's biological father, Robert Jones, known as Bob, was not around, Dave grew up with a loving father. My dad now, he's given us the world, we've lived all over the world and he's provided for us and he's like my hero. He took on a, a, a mother with two young children and that's amazing in my box. So tell me what you know about Bob Jones. He um, was Welsh, um, he was brought up in Wales and then he moved to Australia in the early 80s which, and he met my mother not long after that. I know he was a very smart person. That's Bob, probably at Lone Pine in Brisbane. It does look Especially like Especially with a beard. Yeah. Dave's mother, Marilyn, is dedicated to helping her son find Bob, a man she has fond memories of. Well, I first met Bob when I was in Australia. I had a little boy, Tim. We met and fell in love and lived together for a while, and then we decided to get married. A couple of years later, probably, I found I was pregnant with David. But the marriage to Bob didn't go well. After Marilyn discovered she was pregnant, they separated amicably. She came home to New Zealand and gave birth to Dave. Bob had every opportunity to be in touch with David, and because of his upbringing, he was very pragmatic. And once something ended, he shut the door on that. I did write and tell his mother that David was born, and he sent David a birthday card with a $5 Australian note with no return address. That was the very last contact we had. As a young teenager, Dave started calling himself Jones, simply because it was on his passport. Since the age of 13, I've been the only Jones in my family, and the name has never really meant anything to me, only since I had my two children, it was version one of the Jones family as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> when he was younger, Dave felt abandoned by his birth father. But while doing a social work degree, he realised many different factors lead to family separations. Everybody's got a story to tell. I've been looking for him for 20 years and I feel like a dog that's been chasing a car for 20 years. I'm not sure what's going to happen when I actually catch up with that car. But I'm, I'm excited and I'm, it would be great just to meet him and, like I said, hear his side of the story and, and take it from there. Finding a Bob Jones in Australia proves impossible. 
So I concentrate on finding the family that Dave's mother, Marilyn, remembers he left behind in Wales. Two daughters, Catherine and Hannah, and his wife, Marina. And when I get all three names linked, it is a sad connection. Dave's dad is dead. I get through to Bob's oldest daughter, Kat. So you guys have always known about Dave and, and you've been looking for him. Unexpectedly, Kat says she has three sisters and that all four of them are full sisters. Really? It now appears that Dave has two older and two younger sisters. But the problem is, Kat's not sure if they will all meet Dave as the sisters are not talking to each other. I head to the UK to try to put this intriguing puzzle together. Kat has told me that she mainly grew up here in Cardiff, where Bob Jones had worked in a steel factory before being made redundant. I'm hoping that the four sisters are now talking to each other and will meet me. I presume you must be the Jones girls? Yes. Great that all four of you could make it. As I said to you on, on the phone, Dave uh, has been looking for your dad because um, he didn't know that he had passed away. Um, it's sad that he's, you know, a few it's years too late yeah. to meet Dad. You know, we didn't have a lot of information. We just knew that we had a half-brother. Like my dad just... always had a picture of him in the living room, so we always knew who he was, but... I just know of him yeah, from what... Yeah, we just knew that he, he existed, yeah. he's out there. My dad never spoke to me about him, so I didn't really know much about him. Yeah, we, we just knew his find, name was Yeah, we tried David. to find him. We did a couple of um, <clears throat> internet searches, um, but we didn't have very much information to go on, so, you know, just hit brick wall. Well, as I said, your brother, he's done a message which is for your dad, and I wonder if I could just show you this. Yes. So if you were to just push that button there, this will be your brother. Well, oh, boy. Dunedin dad Dave Jones has wanted to find his dad for 20 years. I've just discovered his father is dead, but I've found four sisters in Wales. Well, Hi, Bob. I'm Dave. I'm your son. We've, we've never met. These are your grandsons, Archie and Arlo Jones. We'd really like to meet you and get to know you. I've been looking for you for a, a very long time. It would be just good to find out about their side of the family and, and my side of the family. There's a whole other ha half of myself that I don't really know. It would be really good just to, to meet you. And... God. <laughs> your vision. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's your big brother <laughs> and your little brother, I suppose. As soon as I started playing, the baby started kicking. <laughs> That's weird. He <laughs> looks a bit like Dad, doesn't he? He do look like him, actually, yeah, he do. <laughs> so that's my brother. <clears throat> so you guys would be happy to meet Dave if I brought him here to Wales? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it all just seems so real now. It's crazy. Back at Hannah's home, the sisters, who have now put aside their differences, help untangle Bob's complicated life. You can see the resemblance in this one, Dad and David. Yeah, definitely. When Bob's marriage to their mum, Marina, ended, his redundancy money helped him move to Australia to start a new life. He left five-year-old Kat behind and his ex-wife pregnant with Hannah. Years later, after Bob separated from Dave's mum, Marilyn, in Australia, he showed up in Wales for Christmas. Well, that was the first day that Dad came back from Australia. I walked in, uh, it was hell of a shock. Surprise. It was the first time six-year-old Hannah met her dad. <laughs> then, surprisingly, Bob got back together with the girl's mother, Marina, and they got married again. And their wedding pictures the, the first time. <laughs> and the second time. <laughs> the difference. Yeah, it's a big difference, though. Look how young he is in that one. 
The family, including Kat and the young Hannah, moved to Australia, where Yvonne and her twin brother, who was also called David, were born. The picture of that was Avid just before he passed away. Mm. After the young David was tragically killed in a house fire, the family all moved back to Wales, where Tash was born later. Bob was never the same after losing his young son, and then later, through illness, his wife Marina. Back in Dunedin, Dave and his family and his mum Marilyn are waiting. But it's difficult news I have to deliver. Well, I have some news about your dad. I'm sorry to say it's sad news. He died in November 2008. Oh, wow. What did he die from? I believe it was a heart attack. That's very sad. Mm. Oh. I have managed to find two photographs of your dad, one from just before he passed away. So, here they are here. When was this taken? Oh, gosh, it's like, look at that day. <laughs> oh. That's like looking at you in, like, 10 or so that years' time, nice. eh? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, that's, that's awesome. See, he was a handsome man. There is a little bit of good news. You have four sisters. Oh, wow. <laughs> Interestingly, they are full sisters. Your dad went back to Wales and reunited with his first wife. With wow. Marina? <laughs> with Marina? Did he really? Oh, oh, my goodness. The other part is I've spoken to your sisters and they said your dad always kept a photograph of you. Oh. Yeah. oh. Your four sisters all want to meet you. Oh, awesome. That's... That's wonderful. Where, where about are they? They're all in Cardiff. Cardiff? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dave arrives in the land of his father. Though he lived in England when he was younger, this is his first visit to Wales, where his sisters live. Oh, I, I don't know what they look like. I don't know anything about them, so... I'm just eager and, and, and excited, but equally anxious and sort of stomach in, in shreds. <laughs> so, who's the most nervous? I think we're all equally <laughs> nervous. Mm. Yeah, very nervous. I still won't believe it until we see him. <laughs> he looks a bit like your dad, doesn't he? It's, it's going to bring back a lot, isn't it, about dad as well? Yeah. I'm just a bit gutted, really. I think the dad's couldn't be here as well to see it. Well, if you were to look over your right shoulder, behind you there, can you see those four ladies? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's your sisters. You better go down and say hello. All right. <laughs> Wow, this is really happening. Yeah. Just, after all these years, he's there. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Nice to meet you all. Well. Nice to meet Hi. you. Wow. I'm Kat. Nice. Hi. Meet you. Yvonne. Yvonne, nice to meet you. Yeah. Hi. 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 Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> I've been looking for you guys for a long time. <laughs> you look so much like Dad. Really overwhelming. Mm. It's just amazing. I've just continuously look, looked for you guys, but it just, it's just been so hard. Amazing that he's here right in front of us, you know. He's just like one of us, basically. This <laughs> still feels like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a massive day and there's a long evening of catching up for Dave and his new sisters. On the one hand, I'm, I'm deeply saddened that my father had passed in, and that was the last scenario I'd, I'd expected. 
but on the plus side, meeting these girls and, and kind of meeting him through them, you know, it feels like he's present as well. And it's just been overwhelming and I've, I've just sort of grabbed it with both hands and, and you know, it's, it's just been great. Kia ora. My name is Terangi Tawairiri. I can trace my Māori ancestry back 72 generations. I'm also Irish. I know nothing about my Irish side. Can you help me find my Irish family? 53-year-old T.Y. Reedy lives in Auckland and works in the film industry. His many credits include working on Once Were Warriors and a host of other local productions. T.Y., who has a partner and four children, knows a lot about his Maori heritage, but almost nothing about the man who gave him his surname, an Irish sailor called Thomas Reedy. Tiwai wants to find out about Thomas and to meet any Reedy relatives still living in Ireland. It's been more than 150 years since Thomas' time came to New Zealand. The family has never really been over there to search around for where he came from. Um, we really need to make those connections now, sooner rather than later, and I'm hoping I'm going to be the one to make those connections. Father of four, T.Y. Reedy, knows all of his Maori ancestry, but he knows nothing of his Irish side. T.Y. grew up on a farm on the East Coast and returns to Ruatoria whenever he can. He has lots of Reedy relatives here, nearly 600 of them. Support Many in this room, including T.Y., trace their lineage back to a Pākehā patriarch they know almost nothing about. No photographs exist of Thomas Reedy. T.Y. takes me to the place where his ancestor arrived in New Zealand and indeed is buried. Well, Tuparo is the, the original settlement of Ruatoria. It stretched from the grass verge down there right up to this area about here. So how did the Reedy clan start? Well, um, Thomas Tyne Reedy was a whaler and they would bank it out here and uh, he swam ashore. Fell in love with a young Māori woman from here by the name of Mihi Tuho. And I'm the product, I guess, of that, of that union today. The church up here, that's where Thomas Tyne married Mihi Tuho. This is where he's buried here. But there's no headstones? No, as uh, we bought a tohunga in here to try and locate where he's buried in this area. Unfortunately, we couldn't locate him. Is there no sign of him at all here? Unfortunately for us, no. no. Well, we might have to take you to Ireland to try and track down your family's heritage. I'm sure the family would love that. I established the names of Thomas's parents, John Reedy and Bridget Wall, and that leads me to a birth certificate for Thomas. The double E spelling seems to be a mistake that was carried over. I discover the Reedy's owned property, but were far from rich. When it comes to locating present-day Irish relatives, I hit a brick wall. Arriving at Shannon Airport in the southwest of Ireland, I head towards Ennis, a market town in the main centre for County Clare. The nearby Kilmaley Church is where parish records relating to the Reedy family are held. The details here give me a sense of Irish history. How the potato famine left a million dead and forced as many again to leave Ireland forever. Given the dates, Thomas was clearly one who left for a better life. My next stop is Clare County Heritage Centre. I've arranged to meet local historian David Dillon, who actually lives in the village that was the home of the Reedy family. Hello, are you David? I am indeed. Yes. David Lomas from New Zealand. I'm told you're the expert on a little town called Glen Letterfinney. Yes, well, I, I come from there. Essentially, we're trying to track down 
relatives of John Reedy and a uh, Bridget Wool who got married in the early 1800s here in Ireland. Okay. They had these children. One of them, Thomas Tyne Reedy, went to New Zealand and he married a local woman there. One of the descendants there is trying to track down his Irish relatives. I believe that I know the house in question. Um, it is now unoccupied, but... So you know the actual house? I know the actual house. Where, where John Reedy and Bridget Wall lived? Absolutely, yes. So would you be happy to um, take T.Y. Reedy, who's the descendant down here, to the old Reedy home? Yes, indeed, I'd be delighted to, because I'm very interested in local history myself, so I'd only be too glad to do it, yes. David also tells me that the house was once owned by a Mrs. Rita Maloney, who it turns out is T.Y.'s closest Irish relative. So I head to her home to meet Rita and her husband, Pat. So the New Zealand Reedies, the descendants of Thomas Tyne Reedy, there's 600 of them now, and they're trying to find their Irish roots. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. One of them, T.Y. Reedy, he's come here to Ireland and he's trying to track down his long-lost relatives. Yes. And he's done a video message, which I would like to show you if I could. This is the man who's coming here to look for his relatives. Kia ora. My name is Terangi Tawai Reedy. I can trace my Māori ancestry back 72 generations. I'm also Irish. I know nothing about my Irish side. It would be great if we could reconnect with our Irish ancestors after almost 200 years. I wish I could go over and visit now. <laughs> So that's the New Zealand Reedy tribe. Amazing. Yeah. You spell it differently. Different no, R E I do, isn't it? They spell it Reedy with two E's in New Zealand. It was a, a spelling mistake 150 odd years ago and it's never been corrected. Oh, oh right. right. Yeah. Yes. Would you be happy to meet with T.Y.? Oh, yes. Yes. How does it feel to know that you have 600? Maori relatives in New Zealand. Oh, it's just fantastic. <laughs> you know, like, it's just fantastic. T.Y. arrives in Ireland. It's his first visit to the land of his forefathers. Here we go, round again. He has brought with him a number of things, one of which is a song he's composing that he hopes to perform for any Irish relatives that he's lucky enough to meet. Farewell to this land of my forefather's hands. Farewell, kith and kin, my beloved Ireland. I take T.Y. 20 kilometres out from Ennis to what's left of the settlement of Glen Letterthinny. Once this area was County Reedy. So, well, this is essentially where your great-great-grandfather came from. It was a, a little settlement called Glen Letterfinney. Yes. I mean, this is the 1901 census, but it sort of illustrates who lived here. Mary Dillon, James Reedy, Mary Reedy, Thomas Reedy, John Reedy, Daniel Reedy. They were all the homeowners here. I see, yes. And as a chap, David Dillon, who's related to the Dillons from here, is going to meet us here, hopefully, if I've got the right spot. Nice to see you again. Hello, David. Nice to see you. This is T.Y. Reedy. Hello, T.Y. You're very welcome to Ireland. Hello, David. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, there is something just up the road which I believe you will be really interested to see if you just follow me. I'm in Ireland helping 53-year-old T.Y. Reedy find his Irish roots. Local historian David Dillon has helped me find something T.Y. will not be expecting. If you just follow me. Thank you. Thank you. T.Y. has no idea that he's about to arrive at his ancestral home. When was this house built? Well, we think in the, it's built in the 1830s. And of course, the most interesting thing of all about it is that this is the very house where your great-great-grandfather 
Thomas Reedy was born in. Who was it? This house here. His parents were John Reedy and Bridget Wall. And this is the house that Thomas Reedy left in the 1850s. So my uh, Thomas Tyne was from born, here. He was born in this house. Oh, amazing. So it was, it was well worth your visit. Thank you very much. It's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. Simply standing in the doorway of the house where Thomas Tyne left to come to New Zealand, that doorway was one that Thomas Tyne would never go back through. I wondered what his mother was feeling at that time. Would she ever see her son again? This would be my, my Papa Kainga, my Turanga Waiwai. Uh, Papa Kainga being the place where I live, where I come from. Yes. Turanga Waiwai, the place where I stand, where I'm strong, the place that is mine. Yes. And even though I'm Māori from New Zealand, the Irish blood in me now is singing to this, to this whenua, to this land. Yes. It's, very emotional, very spiritual. I moment. can well imagine, yes, yes. I can well imagine, yes. And I'm quite sure it, it, it's your first visit to Ireland, but after this, I'm quite sure it won't be your last. I can assure you it will not be my last. The next time I'll bring my family. Excellent. I have another surprise for TY. I take him to the Kamali Church, where earlier I'd found Thomas Reedy's baptismal record. The spot I really want to show you is just over here. Right here on this spot, on the 10th of April, 1846, your great-great-grandfather was baptized right here. Oh, my God. Incredible. So, in a few minutes, Father Larkin's going to say mass here, and he's going to welcome you back to the Church of Your Forebears. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of life. We proceed from the Bible of the Son. Having now gained some sense of the life his ancestor, Thomas Reedy, experienced before he left for New Zealand, it's time to introduce T.Y. to an Irish relative, a descendant of those who stayed behind. So this is your, your nearest Irish relative, okay. Mrs. Maloney. I'll leave you to it. You think him? Hello, Mrs. Maloney. Hello. Mrs. Hi, you're welcome. Nice Hello. to meet you. Wonderful to be here. I'm related to you. <laughs> you know what I say? So nice to meet you. Oh, very nice to meet you, too. Yes. Very nice indeed. <laughs> How wonderful. Uh, yes. Your ancestor is a brother to my great-great-grandfather. That's right. My grandfather, Jimmy Reedy. Oh, yeah. Rita is an amazing lady. It was just like being at home, sitting with some of my aunts. And uh, overwhelming emotion for me. Yes. I could see myself in her. And uh, as uh, <laughs> she could see herself in me. That was a wonderful moment, it was a wonderful moment. Through David, I've organised for Tiwai to meet yet another Irish relative. But Ireland turns out to be a small place, and the distant cousin bumps into us instead. Hello, Michael, <clears throat> how are you? Hi, David. Lovely day. Good. You, you're like a man who's working hard. That's right, trying to anyway. Well, we were going to call you tomorrow with somebody special who's come all the way from New Zealand. This, this is a brother of mine, I'm afraid. He well, looks like a brother of mine. This is T.Y. <laughs> Reedy, all the way from New Zealand. And this is How are you doing? Michael Dillon. He was passes cousin. my brother, anyway. He's a cousin of yours. Michael, it's unbelievable. You look like my grand-uncle. You look like members of my family. And you look like my brother. Uh, before I came over here, I was thinking to myself whether or not I'd see myself in my Irish relatives. There you go. And blow me down. And I like, I like the dress. I uh, like the... You like the slurry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I come from that too. I, I'm, I'm a man of the land. Uh, you wouldn't be as dirty as this, Sally. I'd dirtier. Would you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Michael, it's wait, nice to meet wait you. Wait till we have <laughs> <laughs> T.Y. Reedy's Irish journey is coming to an end. But there are two more things he wants to do. The Kumeili Church Cemetery dates back to the 14th century, and according to parish records, it's the place where Thomas Tyne Reedy's parents are buried. But there are no obvious Reedy headstones. The stones are so ancient that uh, it's impossible to read the inscriptions. I uh, came across an enclave in the wall in the rock and it occurred to me that this is the place to place the, the tonga, the green stone. My name is Trangitawa Reedy. I'm the son of Thomas Tyne Reedy, my great, great grandfather. I am Maori, I am Irish. I have returned today to bring the spirit of my great-great-grandfather to lay amongst his Irish ancestors. I bought an adze because adze were used by Māori to carve and cut things. And the symbolism for me is that adze cuts the distance between Ireland and Aotearoa. The haka acknowledges the spirits, both Māori and Irish, and also is a farewell to the Tonga and the spirit of my great-great-grandfather, Thomas Tainwini, whose spirit now has returned back to Ireland and rests here amongst his ancestors. On Sunday evening, T.Y.'s last night in Ireland, he gets the chance to perform the song he has written, To Ireland, a song about Thomas Reedy. Farewell to this land of my forefather's hand. Farewell to love mother's love. Farewell, kith and kin, my beloved Ireland. I shall keep you in my heart. I shall keep you in, in my heart. My name is Helena Marks. I am looking for my father, James Brown. I am looking for him because I have never actually met him. I want to find out who my family is because it's important to me. 32-year-old Harina Marks lives in Tauranga. She works as a cafe barista. Harina has a nine-year-old son, Christian. It's not a race. She's a keen sportswoman playing senior netball and soccer. Her son's father recently disappeared from their life and moved to Australia. And that has prompted Harina to reflect on her own life, growing up without her dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let's pick up some of these oranges for me. Harina, an only child, has never asked her mother about her birth father. Although her mother is happy that Harina wants to find her dad, she doesn't want to be part of the search. When you were growing up, did you think about your dad? I could almost say never, because he was never there, because he was never part of it. It's more reflective, I think, now, because my son's nine years old and his father's just recently moved to Australia and has had no contact with him. And I find that hard, so... Because he knows who he is, he knows he's in his life and everything like that, and he chooses not to be a part of it, and that hurts. Harina got to meet her father, James Brown, just twice that she was old enough to remember. Harina was in Whakatani Hospital when she was eight after a motorcycle accident. 
the young sportswoman was left with a damaged leg. While I was there one day, somebody sort of came up to me and was just like, hi, Hadina, I'm your father. And sort of spent about like 10 minutes with me. And that's when my nurse tells me that he was there with two other girls, young girls who were in hospital at the same time. So just to assume that they are possibly my sisters. Through the years, Harina has tried to find her father, but online searches have been frustrating. I got a lot of hits for the famous singer James Brown. Um, great music, but not very helpful for my search. Why now to try and find James Brown? Knowledge, information, who his parents were, whakapapa, for myself. Um, and any other siblings. But not only for myself, but for my son. As he grows up, and it'd be nice to actually be able to give him information about myself. So I'm searching for a New Zealand James Brown, and it gets more complicated when I discover that he was adopted. When I apply for his birth record, I'm in luck. It shows the adoptive parents' names. Then on Terranet, the property ownership website, I find they're still living in the same Fakatani house they've lived in for the last 50 years. His parents are happy to give me an Auckland number for James Brown. Thanks. And he says he'll meet me the next day. James. James, yep. David. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Grab a seat. How did it come to that, that you've lost contact with you? 32 year old barista Harina Marks could never find her dad. I need to find out if James Brown wants to meet his daughter. Grab a seat. How did it come to that, that you've lost contact with your, your girl? Um, yeah, well, me, me and Shona, we, we were quite young at the time. Um, she was working in the bank. I was starting off as a civil worker. And then for her to career her future in the bank, she had to move to Auckland. We made that decision to part as friends. And then on that, we found out she's pregnant. She still wanted her career, so I said, well, um, I'm settled in my job. I don't want to leave. And, so, yeah, she just came up to Auckland, and, and that was so the you, last I'd seen of her and Harina. And when I rang you and uh, said that Harina was looking, were you pleased that she was oh, looking? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. What do you remember of Harina when she was a little girl? She was a scrawny little thing, yeah. Well, would you like to see what she looks Certainly. like now and see Certainly. what she has to say to you? Yep. So if you were to... Just push that button there. OK. Hi, my name is Harina Marks, oh. and I'm your daughter. She's beautiful. Last time you see me would have been about when I was eight, um, in a hospital, at Pakitani Hospital. Um, a lot's changed since then. And I've tried looking for you myself and have had no luck. It would be nice to meet you and to get to know you. Oh, you found me. No, she's gorgeous. So not the scorny little thing anymore? No. She's got all her father's features. <laughs> she's beautiful, you said. So, would you like to meet her? Yep. Yeah, most definitely. James lived in Whakatane until 2001, then moved to Auckland, where he works in construction. He's married with eight other children, aged nine to 36. So if you get to, to meet your dad, what are the things you tell him about that you're most proud of? Um, it'll be first off my son. That's the first thing I'll tell him about. Um, and then as my childhood, all my sporting, 
achievements and everything I did like that. And is Christian excited by the, the prospect of meeting his granddad? Um, yeah, excited for me because I've never met him. And so it'll be a new thing for both of us. It'll be really exciting. Well, I have met your dad. And he said he would very much like to meet you. You would? <laughs> yep. And you have eight brothers and sisters. Whoa. <laughs> eight. Wow. He was a busy man. <laughs> He's in Auckland, so you'll have to go up there to meet him, take Christian with you. Two days later, Harina arrives with young son Christian for the meeting she thought would never happen. So tell me how you're feeling right now. Yeah, freak out factor of about eight and a half. It's up there. It's up there. Have a look over here at that. Do you see that man standing there? Yep. That's your dad. Do you want to go and say hello? Yep. All right. Off you go. Good luck. I knew it was here straight away, just looking at her. Just excited and, uh, you yeah, know, I haven't got any words. Words just can't explain it. How long have you been looking for me? Uh, 20 years. 20 years? Uh, yep. Didn't the mum, mum wouldn't help you? No. Well, you found me. Hang on, I can hear footprints. And this one here is Christian. And you must be Christian. Hello, how are you? Hey. You've got green eyes. Where did you get your green eyes from? I don't know. Hey, you don't know. It's good. We can only go forward from now. From now on, she can meet the rest of the family, and we've just got so much to look forward to, and just move forward, and we've got a bond. Harina and James keep in touch. They've visited each other, and she has met some of her eight brothers and sisters. The others are overseas, and one day she is looking forward to meeting her entire far now. It just starts a new chapter, new path in life, and it's great. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> 